Okay, three, two, one. Yellow, yellow. Welcome to another episode of Eigen Bros. Mm -hmm. Today, we're discussing Tenet. Indeed. The Christopher Nolan movie that came out in 2020. Mm -hmm. And we watched, we risked our lives. We risked it for the Rona. <laughs> Uh, you know, there, we're, were no one, there was one guy in the theater. There was one guy in the theater outside of, of us, us, my, me and my roommates. Mm -hmm. So our roommates, I guess, or mm -hmm. our roommate, mm -hmm. singularly. Um, and, um, and yeah, so like, uh, first off, we're going to talk about the physics of the movie. Indeed. Right? So Indeed. Let's so get we into won't it. get into the plot, so hopefully... Um, no, we'll get well, into Well, I guess plot. we will. So yeah, spoiler alert. If you guys alert. haven't seen Tenet, this is a massive spoiler episode. Yes. But, uh, you know, even if you do watch this podcast, honestly, the movie is so convoluted, it's probably not going to spoil anything anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, if anything, it's probably better to watch this as a preamble. Yeah, maybe so. <laughs> I would actually, That's actually a great suggestion, honestly, Warren, because the movie is very complicated. Yeah. It's, a, it, time, it's a time-related movie. Mm -hmm. This is what happens, folks. Yeah, so let's get into it. First off... Yes. The physics concepts in the movie. Yes. So it's base. Yeah. Symmetry. Symmetry. That's symmetries. Parity. Two two words that I'm gonna throw out there. Yes. Yes. So definitely. So the whole movie um, was based around like time reversal was the big, the big one you could really tell in the movie. Um, and basically, in the whole movie, there was um, the protagonist was. Uh, able to, well, I guess not just the protagonist, but whose name is literally the protagonist. You don't know his name throughout the whole movie. Oh shoot, you're right. Yeah, I think yeah. you're right. Yeah, no, I'm right. Oh shoot, I didn't even realize that. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I'm the protagonist of this story. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, the protagonist as well. Well, people in this universe are able to invert. Yes, and basically what that means is they're able to invert themselves back in time. So this has to do with time translational symmetry, and they can actually go backwards and forwards in time using some kind of machine. Now, the argument is that this machine actually makes you radioactive and for some reason, like, reverses time of the, the your particles. So Yes, I don't know if it makes you radioactive. But when it reverses, no, but the your implication is that it is though, because the the lead the the villain gets cancer, pancreatic cancer, is dying from pancreatic cancer. Oh, is that what what it was yeah. from? Yeah. I th are you sure it's not related to? Ju it's just not the a coincidence. dialogue. I don't know, but the dialogue. One hour later. Oh, I didn't even notice that yeah. at all. And then like beats the crap. Damn out man, of you got some good attention to detail <laughs> over here because I didn't notice that at all. Well, <laughs> I like, was busy just confused. Yeah, by yeah. the whole movie. Well, the movie is entirely confusing. Like it's there's so many parts where. You get a jumbled sense of like, where am I? Am I going linear in time? Which part? Yeah. Which are there any characters that are inverted? What's going on? Yeah, yeah. And I we had this. We talked about this at a pretty good length afterwards. Yeah. But um, yeah. With any kind of time travel movie, there's just so much going on. Mm. It's hard to tell. And with this one also, they're going back and forward in so many different timelines. It just becomes a convoluted mess at some point. Yeah. But um, I think they did a pretty good job with the movie overall. I yeah. mean, as much as you can do with any kind of time travel movie. Um, but I guess a couple things I wanted to touch upon were some of the things related to the um, inversion. Yeah. So it was interesting to me. One of the main things I think we can uh, notice in the movie was um, uh, the whole thermodynamic stuff. So one part of the movie, there was a scene where the villain and the protagonist both go inverted back in the timeline mm -hmm. and uh the villain eventually meets up with the protagonist after he's been turned overturned in his car and sets him on fire or tries to set the car on fire but due to the inversion the fire actually freezes him over and he gets hypothermia instead of yeah. being burned to death yeah and uh this is just a strange thing <laughs> to me and i think it's it's almost a misunderstanding of the physics behind this so i mm -hmm. think nolan i think when nolan made this movie he had the concept of concept of entropy in his brain as well as maybe even charge parity time inversion and i think he kind of put his own spin or interpretation on this mm -hmm. because um this part just didn't really make much sense to me um, yeah me either yeah <laughs> and uh i try to think like what what was the problem i had with it 
Well, let's let's clarify for the listeners. So in the in the movie, yeah. So they actually warn about this this effect because they're saying yeah. that physics, early on. Yeah, early on they say physics is inverted, and so one of the natural extensions is this whole thing where ent- entropy is inverted in the in the movie. And right. So, so so for the layman in the audience, entropy always is increasing. So entropy can be thought of as the um, measure of disorder of systems. Yeah. And so like in in colloquially speaking you know cold things they te- they typically tend to or things that are solid for instance have mm-hmm. a have a lower entropy than say a gas which yeah. has higher which which has molecules that are moving right, and, right. And more randomness you could say so right it's so it's increase in entropy when it's a gas exactly yeah. exactly and so if you reverse this yeah it would be like if it's a gas meaning it's typically hotter or mm-hmm. has more energy it will go into a to cold a solid. state yeah, right. if it's reversed. So. Right, right. So what Nolan is doing here is he's saying, okay, since I, we're in an entropy-reversed world, yes. um, when you're setting someone on fire, if you're inverted, then now you're... you're um, so normally in thermodynamics, uh, heat travels to cold. So it's a heat sink goes to a cold sink, and it's mm-hmm. a one-way street. Mm-hmm. So if you have an inversion of that, then it's now cold goes to heat. So the fire um the the fire uh hit uh engulfing his car since his car is colder than the fire he's saying that the cold is going the the colder car is now transferring its heat to the hotter fire yeah so it's an inversion of thermodynamics and i think that's a pretty cool concept it's a cool concept but yeah. i think it's a misunderstanding of what's actually supposed to happen because you know already the thing is with processes like macro scale processes like this in physics, there is no time reversal for things like fire. Like time, like fire is not time reversal, time reversal symmetric, symmetric right? Yeah. Like macro scale systems are not time reversal symmetric all the time. Like to give an example to the audience. Um, yeah. What do we mean by time reversal symmetry? Yeah. So there's not many macro scale systems that are time reversal symmetric, but we can think of a classic one that everybody uses is like, if you imagine a billiard ball A and a billiard ball B, if both of these billiard balls are hit with a certain momentum exactly pointed to each other and then they hit and then they bounce back and then stop at a point exactly to where they started. If you played that tape back, you wouldn't know which one was reversed and which one was yeah. played forward. But an example of a, of a time, um, a time irreversible system would be um, the simplest one they use uh, for examples would be like um, a ferromagnet being magnetized by an external field. Right. So the so the ferromagnets magnets work by having certain spin domains. So they have a bunch of magnetic spins aligned in a certain direction. So if your magnetic field then um, aligns those spins in the opposite direction right. along the field, mm-hmm. if you play that tape back your spin directions will be in two different spots. So you'll know which one is the reversed and which one's the forward one if you knew what the state started with. So that would be a non-reverse or a non-time reversal symmetric um, Mm -hmm. system. Mm -hmm. And and I I don't know if most systems like that in macro, in the macro scale are like that, but I think a lot of systems at least in the macro scale are like that. Right, right, right. So like, for instance... It, it it and that's w- w- one of the glaring things in the movie was the fire thing. I think the other yeah. thing was uh, the oxygen, uh, right, right part. So like in the movie, they actually require uh, if you're inverse to wear a gas mask. Now yeah, at first, yeah. I thought it was because well, like I thought it was a mechanical process because your lungs want to uh, inhale. Uh huh. But if you're in a reversed world, I thought oh you're going to you it's going to be like a fish out of water. You want to you want to exhale as opposed to inhale. It's it, it'd be a weird mechanical thing. Right, right. But then the move. Uh, then you clarified it's actually. Yeah, because I didn't see that. Because I was like, if you yeah. think of breathing in, and then breathing out. Yeah. If you replay that, if you re- inverse that, on like a tape recorder, yeah. you're not gonna be able to tell the difference. It's gonna look like the same thing. But then I realized, oh, you're getting, what's getting actually oxygen, happening yeah. is, you're taking in oxygen when you breathe in. Then the blood vessel, the blood takes the oxygen and gives it to your body, and then the out, the expelled um, waste product is CO two. Yeah. So what Nolan's thought was, he was thinking that if you're breathing in in inverse time, 
now you're breathing in CO2 and yeah. you're expelling oxygen. So then you can't live in that sense. Yeah. And I was like, oh, okay, that's kind of clever. But um, <laughs> once again... Uh, Missed the mark, you think? Once again, these, these systems are like... Um, I mean, it makes sense, but it's almost like he... It's like he allows oh he already allows irreversible processes in the movie though. So why yeah. try to correct the ones that are irreversible? Like why try to correct these specific irreversible processes? Yeah. Like for instance, we already saw the fact that you can shoot glass oh, yeah, in this yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you can shoot glass, that's already a that's already an irreversible system. It's already time it's uh, doesn't it's time irreversible. It's not it's, it's, it's not, not time like reversible. This, it's not exactly time irreversible. Yeah, so it's like, like why allow that one to exist yeah. without making some strange change? And he, but then you have to do it with fire and oxygen and yeah. breathing. So I'm like, just reverse the tape, and then it's like, yeah. I don't know. There's a bunch of like, and and I appreciate him for taking it to this these lengths. I don't know if he if he um, th- there are rumors that I've read that he actually corresponded with scientists, but I don't know if he kind of just like listened to them and was like, all right, you know what, a bunch of you guys are naysayers. If we're, we're still gonna keep <laughs> we're still gonna keep doing this. We're gonna take it in the sci-fi realm. Well, I'd imagine that, you know, uh, at a certain point, you have to do things in a movie that just are cool, right? Yeah. And, but, and I but, think knowing the physics is not such a huge Terrence, deal sometimes. If he kept the logical, like... Consistency? Con- consistency, the movie could have been even better. I agree. Like... But I think it's a lot harder. Sure, but... And then I will I will, I will add this because... And I, and I only say this because if we go back to the bullet thing, mm-hmm. if we're talking about... Uh, reversing the entropy in that as well like it's a it's a combustible process and you're saying like mm-hmm. a lot of these processes that he addressed were one way processes yeah right yeah and and he tried to make them um he tried to fix them yeah. by making them like work in an <laughs> inverted <laughs> system yeah but it's like it's it's actually kind of a misunderstanding of the physics sure yeah yeah and i think yeah and i think in the and that's where that's where it's like he allowed things like being able to get shot you know, right. like you start bleeding before you, 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 uh, you really know what. Yeah, happened. before the causal um, thing actually yeah. happens. It's effect versus. It, yeah, it's effect the effect the happens first, and then the bullet just passes through you. But I'm like, yeah. that's an irreversible system. So why <laughs> allow that one? Like, I don't understand. And it, but but the biggest thing too is like a bullet going. So if we're talking about bullet, which is a combustible process, meaning that like it's a, it's a little mini explosion happens in the chamber yeah. of the barrel. Yeah. It it in 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 theory, like at, at the end of the movie, they have the, there's a huge gunfight scene, mm-hmm. but that just means that those guns should freeze. Well, according to his according physics. to his logic, yeah, and that would have been so much cooler. <laughs> like that would can you imagine like just a right. battlefield where things are like things are supposed to be exploding and they actually you just see ice like mm. forming and that that would be just. It's absurd to see, yeah. but he could have taken it to this level, and actually, it's he uh, could have at least to make his universe consistent it in his land. So cool! <laughs> Think about it—the the spectacle of like, wow, thing, because you really do get to see something in a totally different perspective. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I think the movie was trying to do that, like yeah. give you a different perspective on like time in that sense. Like, yeah. what is what do things look with? Like you're saying, time reversal, um, time being reversed. If we play the movie backwards. Um, but the the thing that I, I I kind of was smiling halfway through the movie because I actually liked. Um, I realized that maybe maybe what Nolan was trying to do was have a movie for the first time, be a movie where you can like watch it playing backwards mm. and it would still make sense. Mm-hmm. But then by the time I got to the end of the movie, I was like, oh no, it's not going to make sense <laughs> <laughs> because he has a part in the movie where he talks like um, he's talking to himself. The protagonist is talking to himself in a, in an inverse world. Remember, it's like the blue no. and red. It's like the blue and red chambers, and they're like gonna get inversed. It's the first time I think they're gonna go. Did he actually talk to himself? Um. Oh, maybe he didn't. But he I was, don't think he. Oh, did. he was being interrogated. Sorry, by the. Yeah, by, he just saw the past event. Yeah. Because now the other side was inverted in right, a sense because right, right. he was now, even though he's really inverted, now it looks like everything else is flipped on the other right, side. Right. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, that was cool. Yeah, that was cool. <laughs> I think his, I think Nolan had some interesting ideas, but I think the physics is so hard, and it also is a little bit of misconceptions combined with that, mm-hmm. that it was like it was doomed to from the start in a sense. But I think that was, I think it was still great for him to try to make that movie because I thought I really enjoyed it. How how would you have fixed the movie? You think if Ooh, you were in bro, that writers' room, I probably would have taken. 
if you were a in that long room, time just understanding the physics. If you were in that writers' room with the phys- with a bunch of other scientists and physicists, what, what would you? How, how what would be the first thing? Because I can tell you the first thing I would clean up. Well, you go ahead first. Well, because you you brought up the fact that the movie tries to you talk about we talk about symmetries in physics. We, mm-hmm. we talk about charge, parity, and time, uh-huh. right? Um, and like the biggest thing this movie did with uh, fucking up, I would say, would be having um, the um, the case with uh, <laughs> your antimatter self. Yeah, yeah. That was just yeah. So. So for the audience, um, in the movie, they specifically reference um, in the inverted world, you have this kind of thing with positrons. They kind of talk about antiparticles and positrons. Mm -hmm. So I think it's natural to assume that this is a charge. This is a charge inversion as well. Mm -hmm. So a charge inversion would be like, let's say, if you go from an electron to a positron or a proton to an antiproton in this universe – all the charges in the universe are flipped from positive to minus in, mm-hmm. sen- in a sense. So what they're saying is they kind of did this weird thing in the movie where they had these suits that would protect you from self-annihilation in some sense. So let's say if you came across your non-inverted self in the inverted universe, then according to the movie physics, if you if you come into contact with yourself physically in that universe, then you annihilate. Yeah. So then you become... It's like annihilation would be where a proton and an antiproton come together, and it just turns into a photon. So now it's just energy. Yeah. Um, but they get around this by saying that you have to wear this suit <laughs> to help yourself not get annihilated. Yeah. But the problem that me and Juan, I mean, every every, we definitely immediately noticed this was that. In the universe, particles are indistinguishable, so it doesn't care if it's your particle versus. So it wouldn't a universe if me and Juan got inverted, right? Let's say that you Juan you got inverted and I was in the normal universe. Juan will just immediately Evaporate. be be annihilated, yeah, because any particles in the universe that's inverted and you're in a non-inverted universe, you're just going to anni- it's just going to annihilate. So matter and antimatter will annihilate regardless of if it's your specific particles yeah. or not. And the thing is, in the universe we live in, is at a ground state, meaning like everything is neutral already. Yeah. So it's kind of like interesting that like he decided to like even incorporate the whole anti a whole person being made of antimatter. Yeah. Like, that just seems like bro, like. <laughs> But I get it because he was probably stuck on CPT symmetry, right? Mm-hmm. We saw clearly the time reversal symmetry. Yeah, he had to mention the par- the um char- the charge symmetry with the positron stuff with yeah, Neil, yeah. his with his buddy Neil. Yeah, um, Neil is one of the characters in the movie. Um, yeah, so you're like, okay, I see where he's going. He's thinking of CPT symmetry here, yeah, and then yeah. we kind of got the parody part even later on. But um, yeah, I think uh, I think it's safe to say this is a charge parity time symmetric universe he was trying to create here yeah and i think uh, and and i but i do think that would have saved the movie a lot from more inconsistencies because like you're saying they have a fight scene in the movie where they they kind of like have a little little a tussle a little tussle yeah yeah and with his with himself with it's him- really early in the movie yeah that's when I started getting excited for the movie. <laughs> I was like, yeah. "Oh, it's about to be good." It, yeah, and it, 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 yeah, and it's it's and you can kind of t- like if you see trailers, you get what the movie is about. You mm-hmm. get that it's a time kind of movie. Yeah, yeah. And so, it's pretty yeah, clear. Y- y- you get the sense that he's he's battling with someone, and you're like, "Oh, maybe it's him." And and so like, um, yeah, you it, it, he couldn't. The whole part kind of made me think like, "Oh, once he comes out of the inverted thing." He's just going to like in in reality. I think it would just it, it would he would just explode. Like yeah, he would just he would just immediately ni- annihilate. Right, just be an energy. Even with his <laughs> fancy suit on. Yeah, <laughs> or just even the logic of like, bro, the cloth doesn't care. Like yeah. that you're. It, what they should have said was to maybe get around this instead of trying to use physics to justify it. They should have just said the suit is made out of a material that prevents or that allows you to enter in a inverted uni- or a into a um inverted charge universe or something right they could have yeah. got around it like a that. neutral like a neutral charge suit or something or like a new particle that allows ma- matter and antimatter to not <laughs> yeah. annihilate or exactly. something exactly you know so, and, and magic yeah like that's what you got to do sometimes that's yeah. and that's what star trek did great you know they would just insert a techno babble thing that sounds kind of legit yeah, yeah. that you're like oh, okay that's fine it's just it's just something that doesn't exist 
but it fixes the problem. Yeah, but it's in the future, so it can't exist. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. That's why I think magical magical science in movies is actually almost better sometimes mm-hmm. than trying to justify it with real physics. Because if you're trying to justify it with real physics, then it's like you catch these errors a lot easier. Yeah. And there's usually more frequent errors then. Yeah. Um, and overall, though, like uh, I, I really do appreciate Nolan trying to do this because yeah. he's written a, Interstellar was like a great love letter to quantum mechanics and like and, think, relativity and relativity, especially. Yeah, yeah. It, it was. Yeah, it was just super cool watching that, mm. and then like him, I know that he's going to conferences <laughs> and like just standing there, and, or just like he has he has physicists in his ear just talking mm. about this kind of stuff. Because mm. I guarantee you, like. He's kind of like the prominent science director nowadays. Yeah, like Kubrick is. used to be the guy. Yeah, but now I think Nolan's kind of taken that spot. The mantle, yeah, 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 definitely. And I mean, I appreciate it. I'm not going to shit on the movie. I actually think it was okay. Mm-hmm. Like as a movie standalone, it's okay. It's not. It's not the best Nolan movie in my opinion, but yeah. um, but it's good. It's yeah, good. It, it's one of those that you definitely have to rewatch and watch just to kind of like fully grasp the the narrative mm-hmm. and stuff. So. For me, the movie got jumped up a lot, though, just from the sound. The sound the in that movie was just so fucking good. Mm-hmm. Not even just the soundtrack, but the sound of the entire movie was oh, that's just a good point, insanely bro. Now good. Now that I think about it, like sound would be so different in the inverted world, too. Did they Ooh, address that? No, that's a new one. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if they addressed that. Oh, maybe we can speculate now. So what would happen in an inverted world? I guess, yeah, you're right, because then the sounds would be... Um, I mean, they would just be... I mean, they kind of did hint at it with the voice oh, it's stuff. it's like sucking sound out of your ear. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> How would that even work? Oh, so then the cilia in your ear that captures sound, their movements would be inverted. I don't even know how that would work. Yeah. Because I don't understand how cilia translates... Um, vibrations. Vibrations into electrical frequencies well enough. Well, the idea is that you're a conscious self. The thing is, this movie, like kind of like glosses over these things yeah but it's like the idea is that your conscious well your subconscious brain would have to do this analysis and like convert sound because your brain converts sound to meaningful these vibrations and frequencies to meaningful signals right and i wonder though it seems to me that if you're living in an inverted world you're sort of self-contained in in the logic of like uh the movie you're self-contained being your body can still do the same functions out like besides like breathing in oxygen or whatever, mm-hmm. but like, you know, you're not going to piss or shit in reverse. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> Unless least- the inverted guy is doing it. <laughs> so if you're in the normal land and there's an inverted guy, then he's, p- he's pissing and shitting in reverse. <laughs> but once you enter the inverted world, uh-huh. now you're from the perspective of, you're in a normal timeline. Oh, that's going to be so weird. <laughs> the, the tenant movie. Where he's like, oh no. this. He's like, I got to use the bathroom. I had a bad, I had a bad Chipotle. <laughs> <laughs> Just... <laughs> he's just like, oh, what's going to happen? He's just like, oh no. Yeah, it's just like, or imagine like puking in that movie in reverse. Like, He's just reliving that. But like the opposite. Oof. <laughs> <laughs> Nolan, you should have addressed that, man. That should have. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, like, there, I get it. It's movie magic. Yeah. Right. Um, but also, um, we should touch up on, on parody too, Juan, because I did oh, yeah, mention yeah. to you about parody. So this is the final, the final piece, th- th- third piece of the puzzle yeah. that you know I kind of came to the conclusion that yeah, this movie's a, a charge parody, time symmetric movie, mm-hmm. um, because we do kind of see parody almost because when you see the machines in the movie. You always see them side by side in this uh, between sure these, you see between mirror, this you wall. See mirroring, right? Yeah, you yeah. see like this weird mirroring thing, and um, yeah, and I think that might have to do with parody. So parody has to do with basically if you change your your um, axis, so you can just think of like a right dimensional. Um, a right-handed uh, coordinate system, Cartesian yeah, coordinate yeah, yeah. system. If you just make everything negative x, negative y, negative z, now you have basically made the um, inverse parity of that um, coordinate system. Would you so, say it's mirroring, essentially? It's mirroring. Yeah. It's mirroring. So basically, it kind of even shows a mirror image when he enters in the inverted land towards the end. Yeah. Um, when he when the protagonist goes inverted yeah. for the first time, yeah. So that suggests to me that there is some kind of parody inversion as well, yeah. some 
space inversion. Mm-hmm. Um, I would think. Yeah, and there's, there's and there's interesting consequences to that as well that that he mm-hmm. could have taken it to, and because there's a there's some processes in in reality that are. Um, that depend on handedness, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Like, for instance, like drugs, like pharmaceutical drugs. Yeah. The difference between like something like, um, let's say, a harmless little piece of aspirin. Right. That's like, let's say, right handed. Mm-hmm. That has right handedness. Mm-hmm. Then, but the thing is, if it, if you, if you mirror it, if you mirror the molecule, it can be this other deadly compound right. that can kill you. Right. But that's if you're in this. That's in our normal universe. Let's yeah. say. Yeah. But if you're in an inverted universe, then the opposite one will be the safe one, right? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so whatever the one that kills you in the non-inverted universe yeah, won't kill you in the inverted universe. Right. Which would have been cool if he addressed that. Uh, I mean, in some ways, right? Like how the world really looks like or what the world really might look like yeah. in, in this kind of like thing. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I thought that was interesting. There's a little bit less. It's, yeah, it would be a little bit harder, I think, to try to do parody. But um, I think it could be done. I think and he can even done. use his, his silly physics, maybe, somehow. <laughs> <laughs> and th- it might work. Yeah, the thing is, like, if you're going to make a movie like this, you have to have a set of rules that you follow consistently and then, like, to its logic. I think, I'd like to think to its logical extreme, mm-hmm. almost, just so you can see. I think like, he did that, though. It's think- just his own rules. It's just his own rules. Okay. It's not real physics rules, right? Yeah. It's it's based on misunderstandings and misinterpretations of actual physics. Mm-hmm. Um, but I think he did a great job for what he could do. And really, at the end of the day, a movie's just supposed to be fun and interesting and cool, yeah. right? I mean, so yeah. I was, some, like, I was happy. At some point in the movie, he says, like, don't think about it too much. Yeah. <laughs> but um, but I, I, yeah, I, there, there were, anytime you deal with a time travel movie, it's going to be. It's hell to pay. Yeah, it, it is hell to pay. pay. <laughs> Especially these time loop movies. Yeah. Which are like. This movie was not like a many worlds interpretation of time because mm-hmm. it's not like that. In fact, yeah, they were all in one timeline. They're all in one timeline. So, it's, so every time somebody got inverted, he was literally in the same timeline. Like yeah. that shows up in every timeline. Now. Yeah, yeah. So at the end of the movie, it was getting really hellishly complicated <laughs> because there would be multiple people in timeline streams exactly at the same time. Yeah. So you can think about the movie like as an upstream, like going forward in time as an upstream, and then like. Uh, there are moments where they turn around, where mm-hmm. they make copies of themselves and go around, mm-hmm. and then. Um, but now that's permanently done in that timeline yeah, now, because yeah. once that you've affected that same timeline, now those now there's consequences in the future on that timeline. Yeah, I'm just like, how can I deal with that? There's just so <laughs> much to keep track of now. Yeah. In a single single timelines are brutal, man. It is. It is. <laughs> that's but, a truly but brutal. But I did one. appreciate that because it it it's sort of it is the movie is is not is not really operating on. I guess it is operating on its own interpretation of physics because, like, there's a lot of physicists that kind of have, like, if we're, t- if we're taking the movie to quantum mechanics mm-hmm. now, the interpretation of, like, how time operates in, in um, or how quantum mechanics deals with time in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and the Copenhagen interpretation is that, like, well, time is uh, – actually, it doesn't say anything about time, right? The Copenhagen interpretation? It's the many worlds interpretation that says something about time. Yeah, I think so. Which is, but we can kind of say something about time with antiparticles. Okay, you can say that uh, antiparticles are basically the normal particles in the reverse time direction. Mm-hmm. I think quantum field theory says that. Right, right, right. Don't quote me on that, please. I have a very rudimentary understanding <laughs> of that because I don't know quantum field theory, yeah, but yeah. something like that. But it's like the idea. The idea is that the creation and annihilation operators, um, well, for creating a particle, you essentially create. Well, not that you create, but the the universe kind of like annihilates that particle to conserve energy ultimately um in the process i think if i remember correctly no you're like thinking i'm not it. sure the creation <laughs> annihilation uh, operators have kind of always eluded me i saw them more as a mathematical trick mm-hmm. because um the derivation of them is kind of a weird one where you now have imaginary things involved so yeah, yeah, i'm just yeah, like yeah. i can't really wrap my brain around that yeah I don't know if anyone can. I don't know if it's just me, but um, the f- yeah, the form- yeah, I don't know I mean, what to say aside, about it. But I'm saying, aside from the formalism, like you, you, well, the formalism is important because I can't really even put that in a physical picture now. Oh, I see. Quantum mechanics really does it a lot. Yeah. So I'm not sure what. Sometimes I get lost in what's the abstraction and what's the actual physical yeah. picture. I'm wondering if the movie played like if he did have a physicist in his ear that was talking about like how because this this movie is one of these like finite loop 
time loop movies mm-hmm. where, like I was saying, you you everything that happens in the movie is self contained, yeah, and is circular. Mm-hmm. We kind of deal with this in in physics as well with Feynman diagrams, where it's mm-hmm. like you know the particle moves in time, or if you're if you're mapping like the Feynman diagram, there there are scenarios where you can you can write certain loops and stuff where like you see the processes that happen, the physical processes that happen, the exchange of momentum, the blah, blah, blah. You're taking all this accounting into place where you're creating a particle and that means you necessarily create uh, the anti-particle version, blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. Um, That's where I'm getting the, um, also getting the um, backwards in times for uh, mm anti-particles because in the Feynman diagrams, you draw their world lines with the arrow in the opposite direction to the normal particle. Yeah, yeah. And that has to do with the time direction. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I don't really know what that means, but yeah, I mean, I, I don't, I don't know. I have, if a, I, have a, I have a feeling it has to do with charge parity time conversion. Yeah, for sure. Or uh, sy- symmetry. Yeah. So I, I don't know. If, I don't know if he actually had a physicist as you're telling him this, but um, it, it's interesting that he kind of went with like a a timeline that's like that instead of going with many worlds because the many worlds would make this movie m- super messy. Right? It might clean it up, though, actually. No, 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 no. I don't think so. You don't so. think? I think it'd make it way more complicated. Because every action in, in, in the many worlds is, is, a, is, a, is a... What's the word? It's I'm divergence yeah. in the timeline. Yeah. True, true. So you just make yeah, it... Yeah, you're right. It gets more complicated and less at the same time. Um, what, what, what do you mean less? Like, I how think you less in, sen- in the sense because with many worlds interpretations, when you split time along many branches, mm-hmm. then you enter a world where it's, where it's more clean. Mm-hmm. Because now if you can travel between different timelines, then future people from the future <clears throat> people from the future necessarily won't affect your timeline that you're in. You just right. it will happen, but you won't ever see that timeline. Yeah. Like with this one, you're seeing the people from the future within your timeline. Yes. With if you're in the many worlds, let's say you kind of can travel between timelines. Um or like splittings happen. Um, Good example of this is uh, Terminator. Are they many worlds? Yes, I believe that's a many world, or there's some kind of like multi timeline. Mm-hmm. But the thing about with Terminator is, um, it's a little bit messed up too because it's like <laughs> it's then and then it's like why even send the Terminator back? Because like if you're if you cannot fix your own timeline, you're just sending him back to someone else's timeline. Yeah. Um, where I guess it can it could be fixed in that timeline, but then who cares at the end of the day? Yeah, that almost asks a deeper question then of like, how does a higher being perceive time? Maybe the AI is so advanced mm-hmm. that it can that actually it knows that multiple branches of the timeline is important to fix as well. So yeah, now. yeah, that's you, another story. Yeah, because you were arguing <laughs> that uh, it's because it, this this is a good case study maybe on like what not to do with time, with time movies <laughs> i think just right? doing time movies by itself is already a what not to do with time movies <laughs> cuz they're just too hard to do i mean like i think the best thing to do is take a lin- i think nolan did the right thing i would not go i would not go the many worlds approach cuz the many worlds approach to to treating time is super like divergent like it's you're never going to actually fix the the time the timeline in yeah. a sense well, I yeah. think cause at least in a human perspective, it's almost like we only care about the timeline in which we exist in, yeah. right? Yeah. We don't really care if a, if a Juan two in his <laughs> timeline is doing something else. Like, exactly. who cares, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's the thing that happens with many worlds. It's almost like you just don't need, why would you ever care about what another person's doing in their timeline? Yeah. So if you're fixing things in other timelines, it's just like, what does it matter? Like, yeah. okay, I can go to this timeline. Now there's two of me in one universe. I guess I can live in the now fixed universe, but <laughs> yeah. then now I have to deal with two of you in one one timeline. Yeah. Now you're going to um, have to share a wife and all this stuff. <laughs> yeah. no, but I guess have... you can only, that, but then it gets even worse in a single timeline. Mm-hmm. Because then now it's like, once you start going back and back and back, all of these things start to accumulate in one time. And then it almost becomes weird. You start to get into weird um, questions about like, energy conservation now because it's almost like now you're making duplicates of yourself in a timeline you're making you're creating energy in some weird sense now right because you're taking energy from uh you're it's creating like, a copy of your it's like creating yeah. a copy of a particle and it's like wait where did that energy come from? yeah because if it's that? in a single timeline you would think that everything within that timeline all the energy should already be conserved within that one universe right right so if it's a, just a loop back yeah. How is it possible that you're taking energy from, or I guess you can think of it maybe the as energy's like energy's been paid. 
that's what you maybe thought. you can say maybe you can say that because it's like we could always imagine that the timeline is already predetermined or something right, right gotcha like in donnie darko he had like almost like a water trail that was leading him True. through his timeline right True. you can almost think of yourself as like a bouquet of different people who exist at every moment in time mm-hmm. and i guess you could say you're taking that particular section of the of the of the snake of people that you are in that timeline yeah and putting it into another another mm-hmm. point in time mm-hmm. so the energy is already paid mm-hmm. it's just being redistributed from another point on that timeline right 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 this sounds really fucking hippy dippy <laughs> no it's i mean it's true i mean like there's a yeah. saying there's a famous saying this is all made up stuff this is not even really like no but it's we're... not it's made up but it's not it's like not a typical physicist conversation it's almost borderline philosophy in some sense true but but in some sense like it, it it's it's a meta it's a meta analysis of the universe and like if things already the thing is the universe there's a saying amongst physicists the universe is the ultimate free lunch yeah, yeah. like the energy's already been paid right right like so in some sense and actually some people even think that energy conservation doesn't apply to the universe um well i mean at a higher level because like the universe is expanding right okay skirt a little bit into this conversation (laughs) because uh because uh that that's that that is interesting but that that's saying that there's more energy than meaning you're gaining more energy than the big bang that's what there's that's their argument (sighs) no but if the universe let's say the universe exists in a multiverse okay perhaps there's um well, it, it's. I think I know this is saying, not your argument, but it's not. So I have to formulate it properly yeah, and yeah. see if I can interpret it correctly. But the universe is expanding. So I think because they're saying the universe is expanding, like, like, um, because hmm. because it's excel because there's a uh, space time is 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 excel. Well, the how, what's the yes yeah, space time is accelerating, like yeah. you said, is expanding outwards. Um, I think that means that necess- that it doesn't necessarily mean that energy is conserved then. And I think maybe that's because, and I don't want to, and please take this with a grain of salt because this is not my area. I don't know that much. <laughs> Cosmology, but I would yeah. think maybe it's because then that would imply that you're creating space as it's expanding or something. I don't because, know. That'd be crazy. Or like, or like the volume of the universe is increasing, but we know that the vacuum has energy. Yes. Well, that's true. That's maybe uh, maybe what you could say. I don't know. I don't know if that's cr- true, though. That's just my bullshit argument that I just came up with right now. So that would if mean anybody that, knows but, but, in the but comments, to me, let But us to know. me, this, is, this would be a quick re- re- rebuttal to that. Mm-hmm. would be like if you talk about the entirety of the universe, right, and we're mm-hmm. saying the volume of the universe is expanding, then now and, and, and the energy is con- – well, is this – Okay, a, you're going to fix the energy? Is the energy constant? The thing is, all the matter oh, energy the is, but I'm thinking that since the vacuum but, itself, but then is, that, but that that brings a question about energy density, though, because if we're expanding mm-hmm. the volume, that means like the energy per unit volume in the universe would be decreasing, decreasing as you increase. Right, right. The volume of the universe. So the energy density could be going down. Yeah. But then I think the vacuum energy has a minimum energy, per, perhaps. Maybe there's some measured minimum energy for the vacuum. Okay. Maybe so. But this is all beyond me. This is like Spe- pure, pure <laughs> speculation and conjecture. So yeah, please yeah, don't yeah. take any of this as like actual physics. Right. This is just me talking out of my ass. Well, this is us talking <laughs> out of our ass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so we don't know. But um, there but- was some argument. I know um, Nick Lucid did a video on it um, mm-hmm. talking about energy. So check his video out if you want to actually get a real argument for that. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, like, let me just say this. And, and this is to characterize the, the argument that the universe is a free lunch in a sense arguing that it's a closed system and it's a closed loop mm-hmm. meaning the and this is what i meant by the phrase is the energy's already been paid mm-hmm. um mm-hmm. just that you know the big bang created the all the energy we could ever need to mm-hmm. do things yeah i think is, we could safely assume that the ener- that the energy in the universe is at least constant yeah so in the movie at though the like in the closed loop scenario of that you're saying like okay well the, if you make a copy it's already been the the energy of that copy has already been paid in some way. Yeah, it should be right because yeah. you can't because we know one of the most fundamental laws of the universe is can't energy cannot be created or destroyed. Right? Yeah. Yeah. I mean that's stood the test of yeah. time. Yeah. I mean you better have some really damn convincing evidence yeah. to break that one. Yeah. The the thing is the only thing that you can do is because uh, there are two types of energy. It's work and heat. At least humans that 
uh, at least us humans that that kind of make a distinction. Okay. The usable form of energy is mm-hmm. work, right? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the heat is the waste energy. Heat is the the energy that we cannot harvest. Right. Right. But the, but and I think we had a discussion about this. Is there an upper bound? And I think there is. Is there? Of efficiency? Of efficiency? Yeah, I think so, right? There might be, but Extracting. I'm not sure. I don't even know if there is a theoretical one or not. I'm, I'm sure not it's sure. out there. I've, I've seen I think it might be re- related to Heisenberg's uncertainty. Because, you know, when we take um, the the delta X, delta P with Heisenberg mm-hmm. equals H bar over 2, yeah, you can yeah. change that into energy times like time or something. I forget what it is. Right, 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 right. Maybe not energy times time, but something along those lines. So right, maybe, that's true. The, maybe that's related to the bound. Yeah, that would be that, my guess to look into. I don't know. That's probably a good – your intuition is probably leading you to the right maybe, place. Maybe, maybe. Yeah, I mean, it's – it's uh, there probably is a built-in efficiency on, like, <laughs> a cap to how yeah. how much energy we can extract because, uh, yeah, I mean, at some point, making copies of people, that's that's got to that's gotta be something. <laughs> that's got to be That's got to be something. The big. Matrix. <laughs> <laughs> Weren't they using humans as batteries? There you go. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Um, it's how you connect tenant to matrix. <laughs> <laughs> no, would you would you say there are any time traveling movies that did time traveling right? Bro, I don't know if you can do tra- time travel right because I think once you start doing it, all physics starts to get really fucked up. Mm-hmm. But Terminator, I thought was a great job at it because it kept it simple, and it also led it also lets you play around the toy of like creating a paradox mm-hmm. in a simple way too, right? Because, like, John Connor's dad, um, you know, he came from the future. And then he's the guy who was the resistance of the future, which is, like, how does that make any sense? So it's, like, it's got, like, this time loop now where you have to always be sending um, Kyle Reese, which is John's John Connor's dad, back in a time to close mm-hmm. that loop within mm-hmm. that time, within that particular time. Uh, timeline? Timeline, yeah. Mm-hmm. Donnie Darko does something similar as well, I think. Although that one's a little bit more up in the air, yeah. Um, but with Donnie Darko, it's, it's just sending back the um, the artifact. Mm-hmm. I don't know if you've seen Donnie Darko. Yeah, I have. Just okay. a long time ago. Yeah, yeah. That movie is kind of convoluted and more hard to uh, to understand yeah, in a yeah. self contained way. Yeah. But um, I really like that movie too. That one had to do with sending back the artifact to close the the time loop because there were it, it, they called them tangent universes and basically one universe had had something where it it it, um oh one universe allowed an artifact from another universe you can almost think of it like two separate timelines in some sense okay it it allowed some kind of energy so this is basically like um a story where energy is entering into a universe from nowhere from another universe right so it's you can almost think of like either multiverse or another timeline or something along yeah. those lines so in some sense energy was being just created yeah yeah in that universe. and apparently in the donnie darko darko universe in the donnie darko universe that's not allowed basically if you have energy entering into your universe that means that you now created a tangent universe so now they have this 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 interconnection to where now both universes are going to are going to end if you don't send the artifact back. Oh. <laughs> so that was actually kind of the whole movie, I think, of Donnie Darko, at least from yeah. what I read. Yeah, yeah. Um, that was a cool movie. Um, a little bit less time travel. There's time travel involved. Yeah, yeah. Um, what about Back to the Future, bro? Back to the Future, uh, that was a great movie. I mean, that was an awesome movie. But um, I don't think it stands the test of time. But. Yeah, him fading away when his parents weren't going to get back together. I mean, <laughs> that's a great movie, though, man. It's funny. I think it's timeless. Time Back to the Future is timeless, in my opinion. I mean, yeah, it, it's, it's... I've a, watched that movie so many times for over so many years. Yeah, I think I've watched it multiple times. I will say it, it, it is kind of a silly, silly movie, but it's definitely a... a um, <laughs> a caricature of the times, I guess. You wouldn't yeah. have thought. You wouldn't have thought. But it's so good. It's like it's like the best caricature of the uh, what is the of 80s, the eighties? Right? Yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Crazy. The Loreans, the yeah, yeah. the freaking um, style. The, yeah, the uh, the padded the, jacket. The padded jacket with the the, the shoes. The yeah. it was like everything about yeah. the eighties, man. Yeah. The yeah. rock music. Yeah. <laughs> and then him going back to what the sixties, or something. The something 50s like fifties, like that. I think yeah. I think maybe yeah. more. Not sure. The errors were so defined. We, anyway, we're going to get into tangent. Let's not get <laughs> yeah. into that. The movie, I guess, this, going back to Tenant real quick, because you brought up the grandfather, uh, this paradox thing, with the grandfather paradox, mm-hmm. right? Almost. Because mm-hmm. Terminator basically is kind of the grandfather paradox. The movie, yeah. Yeah, in some fashion. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And uh, they did talk about paradoxes in the movie. 
And they kind of hand waved it by just saying, "Yeah, paradoxes exist. So what?" Yeah, kind of thing. I like that though. I do. Movies, like that. movies. I think movies are intended to make you think. Mm-hmm. And um, Terminator was a good one that kind of almost gave you two things because it gave you a lot of action, and then it also gave you, you know, the ability to think about what actually happened as well. Mm-hmm. So it's like a you get multiple dimensions. So yeah, I definitely like that. Um, the approach that Nolan took with that. No, that Cameron did. No, but I'm Terminator. saying, but him, him, uh, yeah, the, the, but I'm saying the explanation of like, well, it's a paradox that exists it, and don't think about it too much almost. For a tenant? Yeah, I do. I do. I don't mind that at all. Yeah. Um, I don't mind it either. I think it's good that directors kind of take that. Yeah. That, that, um, that point. Like, in fact, in Interstellar, he, Interstellar was so good. And I'll, and I'll tell you why Interstellar was so good. I think because they got the physics right. That was definitely his most accurate physics yeah. science movie. Yeah. Yeah. And it and it dealt with time in a realistic way yeah. where because I mean But I think that was also because it was um more uh doable cuz it's more of like a real movie. Like you could you could you could foreseeably see something like that existing. Mm-hmm. Like it wasn't as much of a stretch from reality as Tenet was. Nice. Because you could conceive, uh, you could conceive of a guy going to space, you know, where we maybe have the ability to go into a black hole or you know travel towards the speed of light, mm-hmm. and he's just playing with those things that are more closer to real life physics. Mm-hmm. So you can kind of extrapolate real physics yeah. in a more consistent way in a movie. That yeah, way. and you're at the boundary of understanding for like yeah for quantum mechanics and and gravity right, essentially. Right. So it's like and he only got really fanciful at the boundary, right? Yeah, when you yeah. entered in a black hole and that kind yeah, of stuff. Yeah, which is like cr- that's fine. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a good example of what uh, I like that more than I liked him trying to approach time and decoupled from gravity in the sense like time is a change in rate of processes. Like you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Like because here because he fucked with time in in Interstellar, uh, looking at it as space time. Yeah. So yeah. time is a function of which is real. Like space, which is the real yeah. version of time. Mm-hmm. This version of time is more like, like I was saying, like a, a change in the rate of processes, how some processes are more like one-way streets or something, you know, like chemical Yeah, I don't processes. know if your definition is good. Okay. Um, like what would, you, what would you say in this? Uh, he just played with the symmetry of time. Mm-hmm. And time, I don't, I don't know if it, time is the, 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 the change... Hmm. Like the chemical rate of time process. is the measurement of change. I guess. Yeah. 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 I mean, that's yeah, the most bare bones. Yeah. yeah. That's some bare, most bare bones. Yeah. And all he did was just he reversed that direction of change. Yeah. Which I thought is good, but the thing is, it's a lot harder to do than it sounds. <laughs> that's the problem, I think. But I think if his movie to make his movie more consistent, mm-hmm. you know, to go back to kind of what you said with correcting it. I think I just would have done all the processes just in reverse. I wouldn't have tried to get fancy with thermodynamics because imagine this. We started with the fire to come back full circle with the fire. You can just reverse the fire direction and it still works in the same way as reducing entropy. Like imagine if the fire is here, if the fire is alive, and then the fire just re- goes in reverse and mm-hmm. gets put out. That's still the same effect. Yeah. So it and it doesn't and it actually is more consistently aligned with his able to reverse irreversible processes, right? Because yeah, yeah, yeah. he can shoot the gun through the glass. You can just reverse the direction of the fire. It's just in yeah. reverse. Yeah. Yeah. It's much simpler that way and it actually is, it is. more consistent that way. It is. Yeah. It is. Yeah. I hundred percent agree with you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's maybe not as cool. No, you know. definitely not. But I'm saying, like, if he chose <laughs> to do that cool thing where it's like, oh, but but the energy exchange is going to be different. Like, hot things are going to go cold and blah blah blah. Then he should have taken it to that extreme. Like I'm saying, like to where at the end of that that final battle where they're they're having like a huge, the in, there's inverted people shooting guns and exploding rockets and shit. They should actually, you know, explosions should be ice. Things like that, right. like their gun should be freezing, stuff like that, like right, you know, right. just cool. And yeah, but also I just kind of thought of something weird. What up? Because what if you um, what if somebody did catch on fire? What if you were in the okay? So what if you were in the normal universe? But then let's say the 
antagonist goes inverted. Mm-hmm. And then he runs some courts of time and then he sh- sets someone on fire. Because now causality will make it so that you set on fire as soon as he gets out of the chamber. Mm-hmm. <laughs> But then you're already going to die as soon as yeah, you get yeah, set yeah, fire. Yeah. So. Well, that's what happened in the movie where like there was an explosion in the, and the bu- a building was being like collapsed on this guy. And then like it, you could only see the, the – inverted oh, people saw yeah. the effect and then the, co- and then the cost. Right, right. So, I mean, yeah. It, it's just there, there were like – there were very – not glaring potholes, but – um. There it's hard. Stuff. It's hard to do. There's some stuff to be. It's hard to be consistent, I guess. Yeah, because it's reversing time in a in a macro way that just doesn't apply in real life. Like the universe is not time submer- time reversal symmetric in that fashion. Mm-hmm. When we're saying that the universe is time reversal symmetric, that's saying like on the micro scale. Like if you started the universe over again with the Big Bang, mm-hmm. if you just reversed all the processes that way, then the universe would just unfold in the same way. Yeah, it's not saying that you can redo the universe in all of its processes in reverse, <laughs> and that's time reversal uh, symmetric. That's not yeah. true. There, there's a there's a movie about this with Jared Leto that deals with like this idea. There's a movie already yeah. kind of made that. Uh, it's, I, it used to be the on Joker? Netflix, but um, no, no, it's Jared <laughs> Leto, and uh, you can Google this. I don't know the name. Maybe I'll tell Terrence to put the picture up of the movie yeah, on yeah. YouTube, but. Um, but the idea is that a uh, character lives lives in time going mm-hmm. forward, and um, and then Memento. No, no, no. Okay. Not no. I don't think it's not a Nolan movie, but okay. Sir, excuse me. It goes forward in time, and there's a point where the uh, the the spoiler alert, by the way. <laughs> Spoilers all day. So uh, go watch the movie if you can. There's a moment in the in the movie where. The guy's old now. Jerry Leto's an old guy. Mm -hmm. And then apparently the universe is supposed to end at a certain time. So he lives it up. And he's like, I'm old and decrepit and stuff. And then like he watches like the universe as it's about to end. There's a clock counting down. Physicists have figured out the exact time the universe is supposed to end. And the clock reaches zero. And then um, at that point, like the world stops. Like everything stops moving. And then you start seeing, like, I think he has a tear in his eye or something, and the tear goes, like, back. Oh. Now it's reversing instead. Yeah. So, like, (laughs) the movie played with this idea that the universe is, like, you have the big bang, but then you have the big crunch. Right, right. Yeah. But now this is just the big, like, Now the arrow of time is going backwards. Okay. Yeah. So instead of it actually being, like, a crunch in the sense, like, the scientific one where it's saying that instead of the expansion of the universe, it's going to reverse to a um, compression. This one's actually saying the big crunch is just the big bang and rev- it's just time the big bang, the time reversal of the big bang. Okay. Yeah. yeah. That sounds cool. But <laughs> it's definitely another misinterpretation of physics, right? <laughs> but it's good because it's like people are just using their imaginations to make a yeah. new kind of story. Yeah. So the idea is that you play the movie in reverse now. Like basically yeah. the whole movie plays backwards and this guy lives his life and and then he, he like has a smile on his face because he's like, oh, I get to relive. Mm my my life again in a right sense. right so you get to play you get to live your life again yeah yeah okay um, it's a it's a cool <laughs> it's a cool little thing in fact yeah. i think physicists have asked themselves that question it's more of a metaphysical question mm-hmm. but um is the timeline we're going in now forward or the backwards one we don't really know mm. right i think physicists have some physicists have, i have guess if you look at it like that in the jared leto sense then <laughs> i guess you don't know right <laughs> jared leto sense <laughs> yeah i don't know what to call it because that's not really a concept i know of in physics but uh-huh. you know yeah i guess i don't know right because like i mean you don't really know like we don't really know if this is the if time is one direction or even yeah 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 no idea so i don't know how you would test that either <laughs> I don't know if you can. There really is no way because it's always a comparison to what? Yeah. Right? And, uh, comparison to a sample size of one. <laughs> <laughs> do you think, do you think, uh, how would you say, do you think going backwards in time is possible? Because we can only go, f- we, could, we could time, we could travel forward in time quite yeah. easily. Yeah. Yeah. But do I think backwards in time is possible? I think um, you can with particle physics. Mm-hmm. If I'm pretty sure in particle physics is possible. There was one guy, um, it's a black physicist, I forget his name, but he was on a couple programs where he was trying to build a machine to Mm -hmm. send particles back in time. Um, And what does that mean? 
It has. To, I'm sure it has to do with antimatter stuff. Gotcha. I don't know the details at all. It had to do with um, high energy, probably high energy physics. Um, and I was too. I was too. I was uh, too green back then. I didn't know yeah. anything about physics when I was looking at this stuff. This was in my Michio Kaku, Neil deGrasse Tyson gotcha, days. Gotcha, so I don't gotcha. remember. But um, yeah, if, maybe maybe I can put him on the podcast or something. But yeah, I think it is possible. Mm-hmm. I'm sure it has to do with anti- antimatter. I'm sure it has to do with testing energy conservation too. Because mm-hmm. like there there have been quantum mechanical studies of like them probing, uh, stuff like this. Well, well, like doing the Bell the Bell theorem test, where you run into the the, the Xenox. What is it? Um, Xenox. Xenos that? paradox. Xenos paradox. I don't know what time. it is. It's um, it's like it it's a it violates I think t- causality because it's a it's one of these like quantum paradoxes where like. It, the cause happens before the effect it's or like the, the effect si- it's like the, the system cause. knows the system knows the the thing you chose and it corrects it mm. in in time backwards in time oh i see some weird shit like that yeah like it's already been determined or something yeah like it because you chose this outcome it the system like is this know. where the tachyon came about i don't know Okay. Now we're purely into speculation. Yeah, <laughs> we're getting so we we the need Zeno's, a we need a young Jamie. Yeah, we need for to, googling. Yeah, we do. But uh, the Zeno's paradox. Look it up. It's actually quite fascinating. I don't know if it's been rigorously tested. Mm. Th- these are all things that in graduate school they do not even touch on because yeah, we only do tried and tested stuff. Right. It's so hypothetical, so out of the realm of like. Yeah mainstream physics coursework yeah there's already way more than enough of mainstream (laughs) physics to do you don't need to add all this crap to your plate either all the speculative this is more fun yeah this is why it's on the podcast so you guys get to enjoy all this basically philosophy of science right now (laughs) yeah true um so but um but i will say that i don't think time going backwards in time is ever going to be possible especially in the way we conceive of it yeah yeah, I think the only time, the only going back in time we could ever do is the one we see like in Interstellar. Yeah, where it's like yeah. you you. It, it's well, it's not time. even going back in time. It's actually going forward. More well, it's forward like time, time dilation right? stuff like that. Yeah. Like that's the only to- sort of time travel yeah. that we could be we could ever do. And that's just an extreme example of what we're already doing, really. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because yeah. we're always going in the future, right? Yeah. It's just this one is just aging making you age less so now your time clock is just slowed exactly that's the only type of time travel i think we could ever ever manage to do we can never i don't think go ever back in time yeah i don't think so either yeah sadly i think probably one of these i think einstein was right to take it as like causality is kind of one of these special axioms in some sense Mm -hmm. i don't even know if it's just true that he says and it says it he he, he, um teaches us that act or Treats it as an axiom, but I think have he a kind of. Terms. Yeah, I'm sorry, man. I can't speak. <laughs> <laughs> Too many words with similar letters. <laughs> no good. Yeah. I was worried yeah, about I you think... for a second. That's what they call nine one one. No, but yeah, I think he takes um, causality as an axiom, right? Uh-huh. And that's why he's like, speed of light has to be c. Mm-hmm. Otherwise, there's going to be some violations in causality. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think that's prob. I think there's probably something there, though. But I think maybe we're not at the point in physics to really hammer it down that causality is this axiom. Yeah. And I imagine it will probably be derived from something even deeper. Yeah. Like maybe like information theory or something, because you know we're such in an age of information theory and being this thing that keeps giving us these weird, um, very general physics. Yeah, general physics. Yeah. Rules. Almost feels like a higher level of abstraction. I agree. Yeah. I think information theory is going to be, they're still fleshing information theory out. Yeah. You can look this up. Um, but like, we kind of touched upon it in one of our previous videos, Gabe. We had a our friend. Oh, Gabe yeah, on. yeah. Information structures. Information structures. But yeah. uh, information is more, uh, physicists are more leaning towards like information being this like more important quality, fundamental yeah. to the world yeah. instead of like us ascribing properties to material things it's it's a more general form of right there are more axiomatic things that more generalized than just yeah. like these physical things like it's getting more and more towards pure math and the more <laughs> abstraction layers you get to it seems like that's the case yeah well physicists love that because yeah then then you then everything else is a boundary condition right <laughs> <laughs> right right you just like apply to this context set n equals three for three dimensions and there yeah. you go <laughs> and then there you go and then you just set the boundary conditions and right you, it's all it's mostly context sensitive at that right. point so but yeah um 
Yeah, and I guess I think that's time, it. Yeah. I, I, should we actually, though, I guess... Because I feel like I didn't even give a review of the actual movie. I yeah. Mean, we've we already can, talked for an hour. Yeah. It's crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we can. I think pe- the people who are clicking on this anyway are going to be more interested in what physicists have to right. say about the movie right, physics right. anyway. But yeah. So uh, my impression of the movie, I actually, I like I said, I liked it, but at the same time, I didn't like it. Same. So, and let me let me expand on that. But I, what I Did liked- Did you mostly like it or dislike it? I think I disliked it more than liked it. Really? Okay. Yeah. Um, I will have to be opposite to you on that. But that's because there were certain technical things that the movie did that were kind of stupid, in my opinion. Mm -hmm. Uh, The dialogue was not calibrated where I had no fucking clue what was going on. (laughs) Yeah, I, I couldn't like, hear them for the first half of the movie. Yeah, and then you, you, they, they're wearing masks in the movie, and Nolan thought it was a cool idea to just not even like offer subtitles or yeah. something. Like, bro, like I don't know what's going on in the movie. Mm-hmm. Uh, so the movie's already kind of convoluted mm-hmm. because you're dealing with time traveling and shit. Yeah, and, and it's bad when you're already lost at the beginning of the movie because the the end gets way more confusing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I literally, I, I think I took a restroom break and I came back and I was like, what happened? Mm-hmm. And then you you guys were just like, mm, I don't know. <laughs> yeah, literally, <laughs> to say, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Um, because like already the, the movie sets off right away with just some like bat, some gun thing and stuff. Mm-hmm. And then they're like, wake up the Americans. And you're like, why are they asleep <laughs> during a SWAT raid? <laughs> why are they sleeping? <laughs> oh, we didn't see that part. No, I'm well. No, but why were they asleep? <laughs> they put they put um sleeping gas in the vents. Oh, oh. No, <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm saying the actual Americans in the car in the van before they sent out the protagonist and all the the SWAT team people. Remember, like, is these special forces? And and like they yeah. send them to this hostage situation with these terrorists, I guess. Yeah. And like the guys in the truck are like, I guess the British guys are like, wake up the Americans, and then. Oh, because probably maybe they were doing a because they, they might have been camping out. Maybe. Oh, maybe so. Yeah. Because yeah, that's yeah. what FBI does. I thought they it was camp like, out overnight and gotcha. they just wait until the right time to. I thought do it something. was like a knotted inception, like oh. <laughs> you know what I mean, like wake yeah, up, yeah. wake up the Americans. Maybe it is also. You think so? I mean, it's maybe. Nolan. Like I don't know. But FBI does do that, where oh, they'll okay. sometimes have to be on like a special assignment and then they'll just stay there overnight, mm-hmm. maybe even days, waiting I on see, the the right time to do something. Yeah, they're, they're, that was one of the more glaring things that I didn't like, and I'm I'm starting to wonder now if he like, because the sound production of the movie, the soundtrack of the movie is incredible. Yeah, it, that for me bumped it up to where I liked it more than I. Hated yeah, it. yeah, yeah. Because the the action, the soundtrack, the attempt to do a cool concept, mm-hmm. I probably would give it like a seven or eight, probably like a high seven, like a seven point nine. Yeah, I think I would teeter around seven or eight too. Okay. Yeah. So okay, you just but have I'm, a different standard of. I, I guess I what do. you mean of don't like. <laughs> but that's a seven. The, the seven is I didn't really like it that much. Oh, it's for better. Me, than, I liked it. It's better than if we're going on a ten scale. Yeah. I guess five five is like, I'm not gonna watch this movie again. But it was o- mediocre, incredibly yeah. mediocre. Seven five is, to me is basically. Fuck it. Like I <laughs> anything below, care. anything I perceive to be low, lower than a five, I will never watch. It's a waste of mm. time. Like a movie will, I I will rarely watch a movie that's a five because mm-hmm. I can already almost see a movie yeah. that's a five <laughs> from the trailer. <laughs> from you the can trailer. tell. <laughs> yeah. So uh, so yeah, a seven is like a seven to me is like oh, okay, it was it was good, but not as good as I thought it would be. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Okay, for uh, me, a seven is high. Mm. That's like, yeah, I would recommend that to people. I would haphazardly recommend the movie. I mm-hmm. I would be like, this is I recommend this movie with an asterisk. Yeah, yeah. So I think our scale is the same. Okay. <laughs> okay, good. I think our scale is the same. <laughs> All right. So I guess so. That's what you're saying. You're saying you yeah. like the movie more because of these things. Yeah. Gotcha. Yeah. I like the movie. Yeah, like you're saying, the soundtrack, the stuff like that. I will say that I did not enjoy the acting from. Uh, Mr. Washington for the first couple, for the first act, I think. Yeah, he was, he was a little rather bit, stiff. He's a little bit stiff. He was rather stiff, but I don't know if it's because Nolan's not really known for his dialogue. So I get it. Yeah, but he probably also, since he's a new actor, this is his first role. No, I think he was in a Black Klansman movie, and I didn't realize this. Oh, really? Did you watch Black Klansman? No. I heard um, it was good. It was good. Actually, okay. he did really good in that movie, so it makes me, it makes mm. me know... It lets me know that he he, he is the chops. Okay. The thing is, he he does struggle with like 
expressiveness, I think. Mm-hmm. Um, which I noted, I know now that I think about the Black Klansman, his performance, it's it's okay, mm-hmm. but it's rather it's rather stiff, I guess. Mm-hmm. Um, which kind of works for this movie since it's a it's a like he's a, it's an espionage kind of like yeah time heist movie or whatever where you're, you're you're not really like expected to act in an action movie. Yeah, I think that's a really okay thing to get away with when you're an action star, but Cause nobody's looking for great acting <laughs> yeah and then the dialogue but I, I don't think the dialogue helped is my point mm-hmm, and there was a mm-hmm. crucial point in the movie where you see this is when sir michael kane like comes in the movie <laughs> yeah yeah and you saw this too yeah, because i, I told you about it yeah and i was yeah. like did you not it's very noticeable yeah, yeah. <laughs> do you mind explaining what the audience what was noticeable about yeah it? so it was just very easy to see the contrast in like a well seasoned actor versus a new actor yeah the scene with Michael Caine just is one scene in the movie was already like you could tell the stark difference between what it means to have been acting for a long time versus being yeah. a new actor like the delivery of the lines was, yeah. was very different and even Robert Pattinson did okay yeah I thought so like as he well. did he was he was pretty good um he was okay. He he didn't deliver the lines like stoically or or just like very like ma- how would I say this matter of factly. Mm-hmm. Him, yeah, like Wa- Washington and and the, the the actress in the movie as well. She kind of had this. She kind of suffered from this as well. Yeah, she was fine though because she had less to do. I think yeah. less lines. But there was and this I blame Nolan for this. But there was one part of the movie that kind of took me out of it, where like they were saying. The dialogue was just so bad because, like, they were in the inverted room. They were in an inverted room, and, mm-hmm. and the, the lady is, like, wounded. And uh, the – I think um, they talk about how the universe is ending, or Washington talks about uh-huh. the protagonist, talks about how the universe is going to end if he, like, succeeds. Yeah. And then she's like, that means my child will die, or something like that. Yeah. She's just like – that means that my kid's not going to exist. And it's like, yeah, of course, the whole world is ending. <laughs> what do you? What do you? It's kind of a stupid line. It's a dumb line yeah. that you shouldn't. I'm just. I think like, that one did stand out to me too. I'm just like, okay. Yeah, I, <laughs> like it's an eye rolling moment where it's like, yeah. dude, I don't know. I don't. I don't know if Nolan did this on purpose or not, but it did not help me like her character. Like there were certain things that didn't help me like her. Yeah, character. but it just solidified you not liking her. At that point. At that point, yes. But at the end of the movie, it's weird. I had a, I ended up liking the protagonist better after the first act. And yeah, me same, too. And the same thing with the with the lady. Like I ended up liking all the characters better in the later acts. So it yes. makes me think like maybe Nolan was kind of figuring things out and when he was first shooting the movie or something. Maybe so, and that makes sense too, right? Especially if they shot it in chronological order. Yeah. Because then it's a little bit rocky start usually. Yeah. When you're first on set. Especially with the time movie, you'd have to hopefully film. <laughs> I would imagine they would film chronologically. <laughs> I would well, I don't know. You don't think so? They probably had to shoot some scenes out of order because like... Yeah, some movies do. Yeah, this like, one I think you had to. Like the Michael Caine thing, I for sure could see that happening like early on. Yeah. More than anything. But also the, the part with the whole plane too. Because they probably had to do that scene all at one time. Right? Because... Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So they had to shoot some of it out of order. Yeah, probably. Um, but yeah. But anyway, um, I guess that's my official like review of the movie. Mm-hmm. Like, and I'll go with yours as well. So there we go. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, but go uh, watch it. It's good. Yeah, go watch it and uh, stay for the outro. See ya. Cool. Thank you, folks. Thank you. Thank you, folks, for making it this far into the episode. And uh, we just want to close out by saying, you know, uh, please like, comment, share, subscribe. Mm-hmm. Follow us on our socials, as Twitter was, uh, as, as, as Terrence was saying. Twitter. You can't speak now. I know. Twitter, uh, Instagram, and uh, damn, those are the two TikTok. main socials, right? TikTok is. Yeah. TikTok's gone. I can bros on, tint, uh, I can bro, I can bros on Twitter. I can bros on Instagram. I can bros too on TikTok. I can bros.com. Yeah. And then shout out to our Patreon subscribers. Thank yes. you guys once again. So shout out to Black Thoughts. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Arya Krish. Mm-hmm. And then shout out to Simon Matin. I hope I'm saying that correctly. I think yeah. he's a Frenchman. Hopefully. Yeah, <laughs> shout out, man. Shout out. If we ever go to France, any anytime we end up at your locale, I'm willing to go, or any of us, I think, are yeah, willing yeah. To, to go, since you're, you're the believers in the brand. Yeah, so. thank you guys so much. Yeah, thank you. And uh, yeah, if you guys want to support us as well, 
dollar on Patreon. That's all that's necessary. Mm-hmm. Just go to the Eigen Bros Patreon. You can find us pretty easy. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. Yeah. We will see you guys next week. Cool.